Next question, Felipe. Thanks, Justin. Good evening, Stephen. Hi. Hey, how are you? Good, uh, thanks. So, so Mo, Mo Adams, Mo Adams has, has played himself back in the starting lineup. He's earned, he's earned that. Uh, two consecutive starts. What's the decision there? Um, you know, going with Mo over Eric Reddy. What, what do you think he gives the, the midfield? Um, and then, could you just talk about perhaps the, you know, Atlanta has, has done well recently on counters. They're pretty dangerous with Gallagher. Uh, it looked like Orlando was just a lot more compact and really shut that down for you guys. Yeah, I think Mo's Mo's been good in training, uh, and I think when you've got a squad like we do. Sometimes you have to wait your turn, uh, and Mo, Mo's been patient, he's been waiting, he's been training hard. Uh, and obviously, I think I was, uh, I've said it publicly a few times, I leaned on Eric quite heavily. Uh, and I think his performance level suffered as a result of how much I, I and the staff leaned on him. So I think coming out of the team for a little bit hopefully serves him well, uh, and his performance level goes back up to what, it, what we know it should be, and what Eric wants it to be as well. Uh, the second part, yeah, I think they, they were organised. They obviously knew what our threat is. They coped with it quite well. We didn't maybe use it as well as we could have. We had opportunities to exploit, but we didn't. Uh, but again, when you're in a game of that intensity against one of the top teams, it's it's not always easy to get the things that you want to happen to happen. Uh, and I think uh, credit to them for their defensive style and the way that they did it. Uh, but I think, and I think it was a fair point overall for both teams. Go to Joe with the next question. Uh, hey, Coach. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, the this team has really suffered a lot this year from the individual mistakes. That's obviously been well covered. Do you think now that you've you got two clean sheets in a row, do you think that the team is just overall getting sharper and kind of cutting down on some of those, on some of those errors that were plaguing the teams uh, earlier in the year? Yeah, definitely, and I think it's a focus thing. Uh, I think that's four or five clean sheets that we've had in the time that we've been here as well. So the, the improvement in that side of things has been good. Uh, we've not been shut out too many times either. Obviously, we're just unfortunate. It's a night where we keep a clean sheet that we got shut out at the other end. But I think that the focus of the group's been fantastic. The work rate, the determination not to lose games late, not to make silly mistakes early has improved. And I think the, the whole spirit of the group looks good. And I think it gives us a lot to build on. Next question, Rebecca, go ahead. Hey coach, this is Rebecca. Um, do you think that the team felt a little too confident with last game's win that they, they didn't come with that force in this game against our Orlando City? No, not at all. Uh, I think we, we knew what we were coming into tonight. We're coming off the back of a game, I think three, four days ago, where we put a lot of effort and a lot of energy in. Uh, but there was, there's no way that we come into this game thinking we're better than we are or thinking Orlando are not as good as they are. So there was, there was no chance of us underestimating them or overestimating ourselves tonight. Next question, Jonathan Siegel, go ahead. Hey, Coach, I joined a little bit later, so apologies if you've been asked this already. Um, but obviously, <coughs> a guy like Brad Buzan came up with a, a couple of huge saves tonight. Just curious to hear your thoughts on him, and as I heard you on the broadcast at the end of the match, it sounds like it's kind of just what you guys expect from a player like him as well. Yeah, I, I think he's probably, he's, if not he's the best, he's one of the best goalkeepers in the country. Uh, he got called upon a good number of times tonight. A lot of them for a goalkeeper like Brad, fairly routine, but I think one or two of them pretty special saves, and you've got a big goalkeeper like that, and he produces big moments. It's, it's great for him to get the credit that deserves, and it just... The, the only pity is that no one managed to put one in the other end, so he, he gets his, his winning clean sheet. But he, he'll be happy with his performance. He's happy with another clean sheet. And as a group, we're delighted to have him. Doug, next question. <clears throat> uh, yeah, Coach, I was curious if you got an explanation from the referee about the non-penalty kick call on the foul against Adam John uh, in the uh, extra time in the first half. Yeah, I, I got a... Uh, an explanation at the start of the second half. The fourth official, Mr. Uncle, told me that they had looked at it. Uh, to me, they looked at it really quick if they did, but uh, I've not seen it back yet. At the time, I thought it was a penalty kick. The explanation was that it was all turf, is what his statement was, which means I, I took it to mean that Adam kicked the ground rather than the ball. But from where I was standing, the goalkeeper took his feet away from him. So I, I might be wrong, but obviously the people at home will have seen it and know if I'm right or wrong.
like a penalty. Yeah, I, th I thought so too. And I, I just think that the, if you're going to look at it, look at it properly. That's what the system's there for. Uh, the ball went dead. There's time if the referee takes his time to look at it and the people upstairs do it as well. But So it sounds like we're on the receiving end of another one. Yeah, and then Adam got his shirt pulled uh, by the defender when he got up to try to get the ball too. Yeah, uh, but yeah, like I said, without, without seeing it, I couldn't comment, comment fully, but I did think it was a penalty kick and that was the explanation I was given. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Next question, Joe Patrick. Oh, uh, yeah, hey, Coach. Um, I just wanted to ask you about the starting 11. Was no changes? I kind of expected some just because it was a midweek match, but was that just to kind of keep the momentum going since that group of players had been so successful just a few days earlier? Yeah, I think we were able to protect a number of them, uh, so, well, five of them, uh, late on in the game against DC. Uh, the, it wasn't a hugely intense game, so we were able to, we felt like the group could manage to play again Wednesday night. And I think when we've had an opportunity to have a level of consistency, sorry, it's probably the first time we've had a chance to have a level of consistency after a good performance and a win as well. And I think the reward was there for the group. I think they, they earned it. And I, I, we also believed that that was a group that could win again against Orlando. All right, last question. We'll go to Felipe. <clears throat> Thank you. Stephen, I'm just wondering, you mentioned that, and it's true, you, you've told us that you've been leaning a little bit too much on Eric Rometty. I'm wondering if, if that may be happening with Adam John, you know, considering that Kubo Torres is out, obviously Joseph is out. Has is is Wolfie now the the, the backup striker? Is he the number two? Uh, and how would you just describe the I guess the personality of this team right now at this stage in the season? In terms of leaning on Adam, I think Adam's a guy that that wants to be leaned on. I think he's not had a run of games. Uh, I think his performance at Chicago was better than I gave him credit for on the night. Uh, if I think back, I should have probably left him on the pitch because I think he had opportunities. And he might have grown into it, and uh, he understood why. But I think, looking at myself, I maybe could have done something a little bit different. The game against DC, I think Adam's involved in three of the four goals. So uh, for a centre forward, to actually score in one of them. So his performance level has been pretty good. But I do think Wolfie, Wolfie's pushing. Uh, Manny Castro can play there, and hopefully Kubo won't be too much longer as well. So we, we've, we've got a good squad. I think it's getting stronger. And obviously, we're, we're looking to keep building. So, yeah, the more competition we've got, the better. And I can't remember, was there a second part to that question, Felipe? Sorry. No, no problem. Sure, if you could just describe, in your opinion, what you think that the personality is of the team right now at this stage of the season. I think the, the word that springs to mind is resilient. I think we, are, we look like we are going to be harder to beat than was the case originally. Uh, we're, we're certainly more focused. But we definitely carry a goal threat as well. I think we've scored a decent number of goals. Uh, again, it's something that we've had to work on and put into the group. But they are responding. Uh, I, think, I think we're harder to beat. Uh, I think we're more of a goal threat. And I think we've got something good to build on. All right. Thanks, Patsy. Thanks, guys. Thank you.